Greetings my loyal minions and welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing well and are having a wonderful week so far. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions or concerns please feel free to leave a comment under any of my videos or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. If you want to donate to my channel I do have a cash app, PayPal and Venmo. Links are in the description below. You also have the choice of super chatting me whenever I'm live or you can leave a super thanks under any of my videos or live streams. Just keep in mind you are under no obligation to donate to my channel, but any bit would be most appreciated. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to. So, grab onto your neck braces and make sure they are firmly in place, grab a stiff drink, some popcorn, take a seat and hang onto your butts because we are going to be in for some more major whiplash. What up you guys, it is Sassy Assassin here back with another video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are having a wonderful week so far. It is currently March 14th, 2024. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to an Amber Lynn Reed video titled The Truth About My Weight Loss Surgeon and Everything Else I've Been Avoiding. Oh my god. More drama from our girls. You know she's only posting a video like this because she's not getting that much attention because of Chantel, right? I think we've all established that. But anyways... Um, I have this on 2.5, so here we go. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So today we have a Q&A. So I went on Instagram and had you guys ask me some questions, and I listed off the ones I want to answer on my MacBook, and I had 31 questions. What's the point of doing a QA and a if, you, if you're only going to answer what's convenient for you to answer? But, you know, whatever questions in total after going through hundreds, but so many are repeats or things that I've already answered or things that maybe I just don't want to talk about. So after about like an hour and a half, I had 31 questions and I was like, that is such a weird number. And I was like, let's do 33. I'm 33 years old and threes are a special number in my family. So I was like, okay, that works out perfect. I really try to choose questions that people have been asking a lot of and questions that I haven't really answered before. So let's get into it because we have 33 questions that I need to answer. First question is, would you do an interview done by the H3 podcast? Yes, I would. I would be extremely nervous though because I know how Ethan is. He is unbiased. He has no filter. And it's like, what does he think of me? And what would he say? But I would totally do it because I love them. Does your mom remember how she found out you were gay? Art, that's for sure. I don't like him, but I, I can tell you right now exactly how that would go. Hey, and can she share her version slash side of the story? So that's actually something that me and my mom have recently talked about. Um, Cause we like to reminisce. We talk about the hard stuff, the fun stuff, like just things that we experienced together as mother and daughter when we were younger. And that is a topic that has come up. And I actually have asked her, I was like, mom, do you want to share your side? Because I've actually gotten people asking this before. She said she would, but she doesn't want to like physically be on camera right now. So I think it would just be like her voice or something. But I think that'd be fun to like hear the mother side to a coming out story. I think a lot of people could actually use that. I know there are a lot of people watching me who have not come out to their parents or just like anyone in their life in general and I think that like the more exposure you have of coming out stories can actually make it seem less scary. Where did you get the idea to start wearing diamonds for your makeup? Speaking of, today I decided to do two Instagram some somebody that she's influenced by basically because she has no personality. Personally, she, I think it, it's a more it, it's giving me kind of euphoria vibes. It really is. And maybe she started watching that and thought, "Oh, cool. I'm going to go I'm going to dress up like euphoria because a lot of people have done that." I mean, when the se when a second season came out, there's so many freaking TikToks and and stuff like that of people doing makeup looks based on Euphoria. I have no problem with it. Like seriously, I think it looks nice. Here and then one here on each side. I'm just like obsessed. Honestly, I didn't get the idea from anywhere. I just remember. I was Bullshit! You steal ideas off people, Chantel. I mean, Am sorry. Oh, oh ugh. Amber, you are literally. Oh my god. She really thinks that we're this stupid. She thinks, oh, you know what? I'm just going to claim somebody else's idea as mine because I'm so unoriginal and I literally have no ideas of my own because I, I'm just basically living my life based off social media and YouTube and stuff like that because that's all I have. Just stop. You got that idea from somebody, you stole it, and you're repurposing it as your own because that's what you do. Okay? That's what you do. We've exposed you for doing that plenty of times. So, um, you didn't get this idea on your own. You stole it from somebody else. I was doing my makeup. This was a couple weeks ago. And I was like, 
how can I switch this up? Because the only way I ever switch up my makeup is like the length or the thickness of my winged eyeliner. And I was like, I want to do something different. I'm not really an eyeshadow girly. I have eyeshadows, but it's just, it's never really been my thing. And then I like to wear glitter in the corner of my eye a lot. I didn't do that today though. So that's like another thing that I do. And um, I actually recently started that just like a few months ago. So I was like, what else can I do to elevate my look? And I was like, you know what? Diamonds. I personally love it because I think it's beautiful, but not only that, but like you can do it however you want. So it's always going to be a different look because honestly, I'm never going to stop my winged eyeliner. I feel like it suits me. It's literally me. You guys love it. I love it. Have you considered cutting your hair short? Shorter to help it recover so yes but not the way that some of you suggest some of you are like go up to here to your shoulder never gonna happen but as I sit here you guys don't even know it but as I sit here my hair is actually quite shorter than it was literally just two hours ago so I cut my own hair and it already feels so much better not only that but I haven't used heat on my hair I also said goodbye Tresemme and I have moved on to a different shampoo and conditioner and I just I notice already how much better my hair looks so here I am showing you a clip of my hair from my last vlog and then I'm showing you my hair today where no it's not perfect but it just looks and feels so much healthier I am very glad that I decided to take a pair of kitchen scissors okay. it doesn't is it doesn't look half bad I mean did you did you just chop it off or did you watch a video of somebody doing it but you need to have it styled though there, I mean it, it's just it's still a flat style you know what I mean it's just shapeless you, you may have cut off the the split ends that you know for sure but it's a shapeless style and just chop 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 how do you manage your mental health with all of the hate that you get so honestly the best way i can describe this is like say there is just this invisible layer between me and the hate that i receive nine times out of ten 99 of my life with all of the hate that i do consume it doesn't pass that layer and i think with time that layer has gotten thicker it has gotten stronger because i used to not handle the hate like i handle it now sometimes the hate can pass through it but it's very very rare and not only that i try not to put myself in situations where i see the hate i purposely don't go into my comment section because that is the brutalest place i can go there's reddits about me don't go on there uh gosh there's like other places and other forums you can go to i don't go to any of those places that's the, one of the biggest reasons why i don't even have a twitter anymore it's kind of like out of sight out of mind i'm sure if i consumed hate about myself on a day-to-day -day basis it would reach through those layers that I have in front of me, but I don't consume hate about me. You guys message me in private and you guys are fucking amazing. You guys are honestly so freaking sweet to me and so kind. That she doesn't consume the hate stuff because, but I don't think she consumes as much of it as she used to. Which I think is a good thing. I mean, it, better for her mental health, to be honest. And it's like, that's the stuff that I'm always thinking about. That's that's the type of people that I imagine who are watching me. Never get discouraged from losing weight because of your diagnosis of a lipedema. Since lipedema is not curable and it cannot go away, yes, I do get discouraged because I know that and lipedema. There is a large portion of my body that will not go away with weight loss. And that's hard for me to absorb, hard for me to accept, hard for me to process. I will always have like a disfigured body. I'll never have the body that I want, but I'm also so far past that like vein. Oh, I just want to look better. You're not. Because that was the case. You wouldn't be wearing those god awful black leggings all the time. It's, it's all about health. It's all about you. Oh my God. You're not seeing any specialists for this. You're not on any medication, not on, on any special diet. You're not doing no kind of treatments to help with this. You're not wearing any special kind of shoes that is made for the this particular problem. I can't. Like I literally can't with her. She the fact that I do not want to die. So yeah, having that fear and feeling those discouragement feelings, all of that is no more stronger than like the fact that i want to live that feeling is so much stronger than all the other stuff but i'm only human girl talk about what, really because honestly amber the psych this continuous cycle that you're going going through with your weight it doesn't prove the fact that you're willing to only do the bare minimum only proves that you're not really serious about weight loss you're sitting here taking credit for shit that you're not doing and it's really infuriating because there are those of us who actually put in the work, Amber. When we see a heifer like you sitting here acting like, oh, you know, I'm doing this and that and, 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 you know, trying to be this, I don't even know how to say it, like, I feel like I'm being sold a bag of goods here. You know what I mean? She's trying to sell us on something and it's like, I'm not buying what you're selling. 
So of course I feel discouraged by this diagnosis. So the next question kind of goes into like what I was talking about, what is currently motivating you to lose weight? And it's pretty simple. It's like, I don't want any more health complications due to my weight. And I do not want to die anytime soon. Like I want to live for at least. Put in the work. Put in the work, Amber. Bare minimum is not good enough. You may think, well, I'm not doing the bare minimum. I'm doing a lot to lose weight. No, you're not. You're not exercising. You're not really eating right. Okay. It's like you're not really doing anything to benefit yourself. You're literally living like a hermit in that place and only go out when somebody is willing to take you. Nothing has changed except for maybe certain minute like situations in, in the area that you're in. You're still the same Amber Lynn who does not want to put in the effort to change her life. At least another 40 years, and I know that sounds crazy um, because people my size, we don't live that long. What is your next goal weight since you have reached your recent goal of 499 pounds? I think my next one is 469 because from my remembrance, that is the lowest I remember weighing in a very long time. Years, probably like seven years, maybe more. Uh, when I get there, that'll be really exciting for me. How often do you listen to music? So I listen to music every single day. I would say for hours, maybe like two to three hours a day, maybe more. It depends on what I'm doing. I will listen to music when I'm walking Twinkie. I will listen to music when I am cleaning. I'll listen to music when I'm showering. Just whenever there's like a time where I'm doing something. You don't have a life. Uh Really, Amber? Like, oh my God. Her, her life is so dull. And I want like noise. It's either that or YouTube. Do you still enjoy doing YouTube? Yes, I love everything about my side of YouTube when it comes to filming, editing, uploading. I enjoy the whole process. I think it's really fun. I've always loved it. I love how I was able to turn a hobby into a job, into something that makes it to where I have a roof over my head every single day. And every single day I am thankful for you guys. So thank you so much for that. And for letting me do something that I thoroughly love doing. And I will forever love it. I really truly believe that. I understand why a lot of people might think I don't enjoy it anymore because I don't upload as much as I used to. And the reason for that has nothing to do with like enjoyment or if I actually like YouTube still. So no worries, I still love it and I'm here to stay. What's your relationship with your dad like? I actively do not have a relationship with him and I haven't had one in a very, very long time. I think out of the 33 years that I have been alive, I think I have only had a true relationship with him for maybe a year of my life and that was when I was around like 11. I was living in an all-girls group home and I think at the time my dad was doing really well in his sobriety and he would come visit me and I lived actually in Upper Lake, California at the time. So my dad, he would rent out boats and we would go on the boat and we would go fishing and those are the memories. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. Okay. Those are the memories that um I, I like to remember. I'll probably never have a relationship with him again and that's due to my choice but it's also due to the fact that he just doesn't even try. He is still in his addiction and it's bad and he has a lot of health problems and he's going through a lot and I love my dad very much. I love him unconditionally. I love him with all of me, but I just know that me having a relationship with him would do more harm than good and that's just reality. Would you recommend Ozempic? That's sad. I mean, you know, the thing is, the thing is I feel sad about the situation, but how do I know that I'm not being sold a bill of goods here? But um, if she's telling the truth, that is sad. And I think she's making the right choice by by not being in a relationship with him because having sorry, having a relationship with her father, because I mean, you know, you don't want to be around somebody who is actively in addiction when you yourself have an addictive personality. It's just that the two don't mix really well. So I think that if you have a large amount of weight to lose and you're obviously under doctor's supervision and they think it's the right thing for you to do and now you're just sitting there like, hmm, should I do this? I would say yes. Give it a try. See how your body reacts. I know for me, I had some unpleasant symptoms. You but... sit advice when you yourself have, don't, don't do anything under doctor's supervision. You're sitting here spewing out this advice and you yourself don't even follow it. That does not make sense to me. God, this girl is to Lulu. She really is. Ultimately, in the end, I'm willing to even try it again. So if you're debating, I'd say try it. Ozempic has saved a lot of people's lives and it has made a lot of people lose weight. And I feel like that's really important for health reasons. So yeah. So this kind of goes into the last question. Why are you open to Ozempic again, even if it can mess with your gallbladder? Because rapid weight loss, yo-yo dieting, losing a large amount of weight, all of that messes with your gallbladder regardless. I'm the queen of yo-yo dieting. You guys know that. I want to lose a large chunk of weight. So it's like my gallbladder has had issues in the past already due to the yo-yo dieting and to the weight loss. So it's like... What's another thing? If I'm being supervised by a doctor and they're like, you know what? It's fine. I think your gallbladder will be fine. Then I'm going to do it. I'm not going to not lose weight. 
It's your gallbladder taken care of, girl. You know, you do realize that that gallbladder could burst and you could go septic. I've been septic before. Um, but during my last kidney stone surgery, I went septic and they had to do emergency surgery on me. Okay, I could have died. Let me tell you, it's not, it's not fun. It happens, happens pretty quickly. You would not survive it. Let's just say, let's just say that you would not survive it just because of my gallbladder. Do you think living in Oklahoma will allow you to grow or no? Oh, absolutely. Because it has already allowed me to grow. This is the most independent I have ever been in my whole entire life. I feel my mental health improving. I feel my emotional health improving. I feel my physical health. I am losing weight. I am independent. Yes, I don't drive. A lot of people don't though. You can be an independent person and still not drive. So yes, I am already growing and improving as a person, like it's living true. on my own. Question for me is, will I continue to grow as a person here? Or am I eventually going to want to move on and go somewhere else? I don't know. What's one thing? You're still having to rely on your parents, though. Is that mine? Sorry, I'm like wondering, is that, that her video? Okay, the, the, still thunderstorm. I thought that that was over. Sorry, we've been dealing with this thunderstorm off and on all day and it just doesn't seem to want to go away, actually. And then this, like, this large, like, boom right next to our house we know that like lightning hit really close to our house and it, my, our whole house shook it was i hate when that happens people rag you about online that you feel bad about so by rag me i'm assuming the person meant like something that people like constantly bring up and the first thing i think of is just like my ignorance with like certain words that i've used years and years ago like i'm talking over seven years ago since then i have apologized and learned owned up for my mistakes and i think that's literally the only thing you can do when you're ignorant towards something is on a Speaking of ignorance and mis mistakes and lying, what have you, you still haven't owned up to the fact about FBI Frank? You out here acting like he's like he's real, like that that shit happened, when we all know that it didn't. your mistakes apologize learn and grow from that do you think the therapy you did for weight loss surgery helped you because as a viewer of eight years i have noticed a huge positive change in you well thank you for saying that it actually means a lot to me i also noticed it as well but i think that the therapy definitely helped it helped a lot because i think that might be the first time in my whole life and i've done a lot of therapy in my life but that is the first time in my whole life that i've ever seen one psychologist for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end and it's almost as if like my whole weight loss surgery journey was just like meant to happen for that very reason because it's like I've learned so much about myself and there were so many like situations from my past especially like in my childhood where it's like if I would even think about it like instantly tears and now it's like I can talk maturely and clearly about weight loss surgery program because you weren't getting what you wanted now you're acting like oh you know I went on that journey for a reason what journey you didn't do anything you wanted the weight loss surgery sooner because you feel like you were entitled to, and you didn't get it. Oh, those situations where it's like, I'm okay, and I'm here, and I'm well. I, I feel myself healing from things that I never, ever thought that I would, and getting diagnosed with PTSD and also BPD, it opened my eyes tremendously. It's like things that I used to not be aware of, I'm now aware of, and I'm able to like rationally be like, okay, so this is the reason you're this way. Now it's your choice to like find that rational side of you, take a deep breath, calm down and do the right thing. So this kind of goes with my, the last question, but it's because of the thing though, that you know, I'm so confused answer that I am going to give. The question is, what is the worst habit that you do when you're in love with someone? So not only do I have BPD, but I have massive, massive anxious attachment issues. Like it is so freaking bad but when i'm in love with someone they become my everything and i know it's because of the bpd i know it's because of the anxious attack so it gets so bad it's to the point where it's like my emotions my feelings my thoughts the way my day goes etc etc is all based on the way that they are treating me one small change or tweak in tone or words can literally feel like the end of the world to me i never understood why I always thought I was just dramatic. That's what I was called, you know, my whole life in relationships. It's just like, you're dramatic. Why, why are you so irrational? Why do you act this way? Like, you're just being crazy. Like hearing those things constantly, it's just like, yeah, that's how I felt. Like, I'm just being dramatic. I'm just drama queen. And it's just like, no, like now that I know the reason, it's like, wow, I have BPD. That's why I'm doing this. Like, I know this. You're not taking any medication for it. 
you know, on, in, in therapy for it. It just it blows my mind. You would think with somebody with this extent, like mental health issues, wouldn't be any in, in, in therapy or taking any like medication to help regulate her moods. It just doesn't make sense. This isn't normal. I know this isn't rational. Having that answer has helped me so much. Like you guys have no idea how empowering it is to have an answer. I'm gonna actually give an example. So say someone I'm in a relationship with usually messages me every morning at 9 a.m. and says good morning to me. That's something I'm used to. That's something that I expect. So if it comes 9.30, I start to think they hate me. They want nothing to do with me. They're cheating on me. That's where my brain goes automatically. I'm not gonna lie. It would probably start happening around 9.03 a.m. So then what that would cause me to do is text them. Why haven't you talked to me? Is everything okay? Like multiple, multiple texts. Because not only is that my BPD being like triggered, but it's also my anxious attachment being triggered. But now that I have the answers where in the past, if I did that, that would just be me being dramatic. I'm a crazy girlfriend. Like what the heck are you doing? Now it's like, if that was to happen, I would send one text. You okay, babe? You know, a simple, you okay? Yes, I'd still be like on the inside having a little bit of anxiety. Like, oh my God, what's happening? Because I'm the person who literally couldn't stop texting the ex that did wanted nothing to do with her breaking the promise that okay i'm never i'm not going to i'm not going to con contact you again she these girls are getting on my nerves i can't change those things about myself right now that's going to come with time that's going to come with therapy that's going to come with help but you're not getting any help you're not getting any therapy so you know what the fact that i'm able to stare the same situation in the face whereas it happening 3 years ago and i freaked the f out or it happening now and i'm like it's going to be okay in berlin i, I thoroughly feel like my psychologist from Kentucky changed my life, like, because I'm able then... to see things so different than I was prior to the diagnosis. Trust me, I know it can be. It was, uh, it, it's, it's just so irritating to me. It's like, you need to get a therapist. Exhausting for someone to be with someone like that. Just having to wait, because there's this thing going on in the medical community, not just in my state, where it's like, really hard to get into a specialist because it just the they're booked like for example the urologist that did my surgery like i've been trying to get into him for a while now and i had an appointment for march okay like literally a couple days before my appointment i get a call from them saying that they are gonna they had he has to reschedule my appointment and i said okay okay you know what i'm expecting it to be you know within the month or whatever and they're just like we can't see you until until august because we're all booked up i'm just like okay you're canceling my very much needed appointment and now you're saying you can't see me till august and you're treating me like i'm the one that's causing the problem no that's that's unacceptable and it was late august like September. Okay. I was like, so what do I do in the meantime if I have a kidney stone or, you know, if, you know, about this urinary issues that I'm having? Oh, you ha you'll have to take that up with your, your primary care in the meantime. My primary care is getting booked up as well. Right? So then I made the decision I was calling around, seeing if I could get into a urologist sooner because I'm just like, I, 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 you know, I just didn't reschedule the appointment. I canceled it because I'm just like, no, I'm not, you know, you guys don't, you know, this is ridiculous. This is the second time you've done this. Okay. And, um, so I, I made the decision to go to Cleveland Clinic. Okay. And, uh. I have a virtual appointment for my first with the I've already been to him so I don't have to go down there for the whatever but I may have to go down there in future but I have a virtual appointment on May in in May that that like and they have next day appointments now that's for like emergencies and stuff like that but they literally do you can call them any time of the day when I made that appointment for urology for my urologist I called at three o'clock in the morning and they have somebody there to, to schedule. How many hospital or doctor's office can you say that does the same? Right? So I called, you know, they had everything on file and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, 
I need to see him. Do you, I asked, well, like, do you have any next day appointments? They said, well, you know, your situation isn't critical enough. Let's, okay, if I had like a bad kidney stone, obviously, you know, they'd want to see me. And I would have traveled down there, whatever, to see him. But like, May. Early May. That's, for me, based on the, the what the other places were, were giving me, is pretty damn good. So, um, and it's a, it's a virtual appointment. So I, I literally don't even have to like travel, to, you know, go down there yet. So I'm really happy about that. 100% agree. But it's also exhausting for me. Um, I don't know. It's just, that's maybe one reason why Amberlynn hasn't gotten medical treatment yet is maybe she's having having to wait to get into a new primary care having to wait to see a therapist because it is a problem right now it is a major problem uh patient people not being able to get in to see their doctors it's something that i've been you know it's it's a stress it's stressful when you have me medical issues like i like i do you know um and you need to get in and you can't, it's stressful because then the ER is like, well, you need to go to your, your, your specialist. I'm like, I can't do this until this time. Like, what do you want? You know, I, I don't have a choice. And they just kind of give me this look like, well, it's not our problem. I'm just like, oh, see, I, I just had to deal with that recently. You know, I went to, uh, this is so ridiculous. Um, I, you know, I passed the kidney stone recently. And, um, I go to one ER, okay, that I, I usually go to, and I'm like, hey, I, I think I'm passing a kidney stone, you know, um, I just want to make sure that it's not obstructive or anything like that, you know, and he wouldn't do a scan, this doctor. He said, well, we took one, like, what, two weeks ago, and, uh you know, nothing, sh you know, all the stones that you have are, are in, in your kidney. Okay. And they're small enough to pass, but I'm like, okay, I'm experiencing something now. That was two weeks ago. Things can change within two weeks. He wouldn't do anything. So I, you know, he just gave me a pain shot, whatever, and set me on my way. Literally did not want to do anything. So, and, and then, you know, obviously he tested my urine and stuff like that. Because he's like, well, there's no really real any blood in your urine, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, does not matter. Sometimes you don't get a lot of blood in your urine with a kidney stone. It's not like always the same, you know. The bo the best way to determine whether one has a kidney stone is if you do get give that person a, do a scan, an x-ray or anything. You know what I mean? So, I, I, I call this other place that I had gone to would go to okay not a fan of this hospital but like i called them and i was like hey can i come in you know i'm like you know because blah, blah 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 i told them i wasn't happy with how this you know how it went with this hospital and i, I didn't want to be seen you know as i didn't want to like get you know, get scrutinized in that way and then so i i talked to somebody there and they're just like yeah you can come in you know whatever so they they knew that I was coming. So when I went to this this place, they the doctor had no problem with with treating me. Okay, and he did an X ray, and it turns out I did have a stone. So um, I pat you know obviously I passed the stone already, but like gave me some you know pain medication there and sent me home with some pain medication whatever, um, and that was it. And I was right. The thing is, if it weren't for me going to the other ER, I would never have known whether I had a kidney stone or not. And it's always mentioned, like, why don't you go to your urologist? And I said, hey, you know, it's not easy getting in. You know, I told him that, you know, your, your, the urology with your hospital canceled on me twice. I'm like, and I just got fed up and I scheduled the Cleveland Clinic because they can get me in faster. They have more availability um, and they're more flexible. They do next day appointments. You can call any time of the day and 
get a hold of a nurse or get a hold of a of the scheduling department. Like it's crazy. Three o'clock in the morning I call to schedule an appointment. But anyway, I'm sorry. But so that's I'm just surmising that's probably why Amber Lynn like probably can't because she's probably pro I, I bet she's probably having the same problem. It's very exhausting. Um, but I try my very hardest to be upfront with the person that I'm interested in. Like, these are my issues. <laughs> This is sometimes how I react to certain situations. I just feel like it's very important to have open communication um, around anything in a relationship, but especially mental health and the way that you react as a person. The way she's talking, like, I, there is a there is a, a, a mature a sense of maturity there. But see, but I don't trust her, and I can't help but wonder how much of this is true and how much of this is complete bullshit. How many times have you ordered takeout in March and what was it? So today is actually March 12th and I've only ordered takeout three times. So I'm actually very proud of that. Like round of applause. I mean, this is coming from a girly pop who would order takeout Stop. a couple times a day. She's ordered more takeout. So I would say I'm very, very proud of that. What show did you audition for last year? So I am friends with someone from a thousand pound best friends and we thought it would be a good idea for me to be on that show. So she talked to the producers and they're like, you know what, let's give her an interview. So I had an interview. Feline was my girlfriend at the time and she was 100% supportive. We knew that we were gonna have to actually move to a different state to be a part of that show. And we were both willing to do it. We were willing and ready. I did the interview, it actually went amazing, but I never heard back from them. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this happens a lot. <laughs> I have been interviewed for a few weight loss shows and it always goes really good. They like hype me up and they make me feel really good, but they never call me back. They Amber, you know what, you know why they're not calling you back? Is because they go online, research you, and they see your channel. They see the the reaction channels. They see all the bullshit. And they're not going to want to put that on their platform understand you are toxic for them okay you've shown yourself to be a disgusting human being and you're still a disgusting human being they're not going to want to help that they're not going to want to showcase that no because may even for them Th that's not entertainment you're too controversial for them amber that's the reality they never even tell me sorry we didn't choose you it's just like there's nothing so they don't oh you shit I shit amber you're not special okay absolutely loved it um because the girl i'm friends with from that show i don't want to like say her name because i don't know how she would feel about that i'm sure she wouldn't care but like y'all you know me i'm afraid like the doc scene i might say the wrong thing like i have become more private on my channel i do want to get better with that and start sharing more but it's hard to balance like what am i allowed to say versus what am i not allowed to say i don't want anyone mad at me so but yeah it was a thousand pound best friends and i don't know it just would have been it would have been great like i i really do feel that do you consider yourself a sexual person oh absolutely absolutely i would consider Bullshit. myself to actually be a very sexual person especially like if we vibe in that way like i i don't believe that like sex every day um i'm a daily sex type of girly pop so do you have a you're not a girly pop just stop with the girly pop Stop trying to make girly pop happen. It's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen for you. This is my Gretchen... I'm sorry. This is my Regina George coming out and saying, stop trying to make girly pop happen. It's not going to happen. Current love life. So I actually do have a current love life and it is with my Valentine. There was a phase where I was talking to multiple people at once and my feelings grew here and there and this and that. And I just realized that like talking to multiple people at once is not me. It never has been. I never. Oh, the lies. The lies coming out of your fucking mouth, girl. Did anything like that before. Girls, girl, Amber Lynn, you go after underage girls. Mo oh my God. It that is like a talking point in the Amberverse is you literally going after underage girls. You've been doing that for years, years.
but it's like people are like you know you're single try it out talk to different people and i did i experienced it great it's just not for me so my valentine is the only person that i'm interested in and the only person that i want to be interested in and that i will be interested in and so yeah i do have a love life what five things would you want your partner to be like i'll name some things like obviously like trustworthy and loyal i want someone who's loving and affectionate like with their words and physical touch i want someone who's obsessed with me like mutual obsession is definitely green flag coded for sure and i want someone who's like weird and funny and quirky and silly because that is very much me and i want to laugh with you and be weird with you and i just love that like someone with a good sense of humor who is your favorite ex i'm gonna say you're not capable of being in a relationship because <sighs> seriously i have a love life you guys my valentine i don't believe it i don't believe it i'm sorry <laughs> i just don't This woman is not capable of being in a relationship. She is a walking red flag. And, and this is not mental illness shaming. A Amberlynn's just not a good person. She's not somebody you would want to get into bed with. And that's not a fat phobic comment. That's just kind of like a... a it's a, a certain... It's a, it's a statement, okay? It's not anything to do with her weight or anything like that. Ifeline, is wifey number one the same as wifey number two? Wifey number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten are all the same person. Has Nick Akato Avocado apologized yet for implying you lied about having cancer? No, he hasn't. And I think that's just very low of him, especially because he still says quotes and does things that I do in my videos and his videos. It's just like, do you have a heart? Like at all? It'd be different like if he was just like another YouTuber who just wanted to talk shit. But I did consider him my friend and I did talk to him about my cancer privately in text messages. So it's just like for him to do something like that is just really, really wrong. Would I like an apology? Sure. Like be a good decent You Nekaka Avocado is a it's a is a is another bad apple. You think that he's not gonna talk shit about you? He's one of the he's a backstabber. He's a, he's, oh God, I could, I would never trust anything personal with a gut person like that. Clear backstabber. Human being. Who is your favorite reactor in girl world? Definitely your mama, hands down. I feel like we don't really have anyone like that in the community. Someone who's willing to stand up towards oh, bullies my God. and YouTube. You, you fucking idiot. Who doesn't understand, stand girl world. He just plopped himself in here and thought he he could take you know be another michael b petty or something but except for for not for us us but for standing up for for you guys girl really you're really gonna sit here and back yo mama of all people I, th this is that one day is gonna bite you in the ass you and Chantel. Members who think that they're doing something good when they're really not. They're just like attacking two individuals. I noticed that a lot of the reaction channels, they don't like to talk about the other reaction channels. And if they do, it's always like good things. But it's like, y'all, these reaction channels, they're not perfect. They do and say wrong things as well. Amberlynn, including you. No, none of us are perfect. We've all said and done things that, you know, somebody, yeah, you know, like I've done and said things on here that, I, you know, I question like, oh my God, why did I say and do that? But like, girl, the amount of virtual, oh my God, I can't, I can't with her. Well, because we are humans, that is just how we're programmed to make mistakes. Are you dissing us? And to do things that we shouldn't. But I think the difference is, is that your mama's not afraid to say something while all the other reaction channels are very much scaredy cats for the lack. I'm not, okay, you know what? There are reaction channels that I have, as a reaction channel, there are reaction channels that I have talked about and that I don't like. That I'm just like, uh, you know, I've even said that about th certain things about Frenchie that, that I didn't agree with. And and uh, with time when I was still watching, uh, who's it, uh, Charlie Gold, I would say, so, you know, I would say things that I didn't agree with about her. Same with, with uh, who is it, uh, Life of Free Spirit. I used to, you know, be a big supporter of her. And then when she started going off the rails, I was like, that's it. No, you know, and I, and I said my piece about her. And then, you know, DC Media Girls, the same thing. When she started going off the rails, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I said my piece about her. I'm not, I, as a reaction channel, I'm not afraid to put myself out there and, 
and voice my opinion. My problem is, is that I don't have a, let's say, a wide enough audience. You know, I'm not really well known on here. I have my little corner of YouTube and I'm fine with it. But still, it's just like not all of us are afraid to speak out against other channels. You're just, you're just outright lying. Of a better term. Minus all that, I genuinely just think that Yo Mama is highly entertaining. I love his live streams and I watch every single one of them. Who is the last person that. Imagine listening to that garbage. Oh, God. Now, you know, that's one of the reasons why I couldn't cover Chantel's last, like, last reaction to, uh, to his because I can't stand him. He's so annoying and so ill informed. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's the worst person to watch in this community because he doesn't know the lore, you know, the background. He doesn't have the background, okay? He doesn't know enough. And so he starts spewing out shit that's not even true. But of course, he'll say things to suit his narrative. And that's why Amber Lynn and Chantel like him because he's willing to, to he gives gives them the ass pats and all and stands up for them. That's the only reason because there's not many people standing up for for people like Amber Lynn and Chantel, and there's a good reason. Texted you. So the last person that texted me was my Valentine. Do you use sex toys with yourself or with partners? Yes, I do. And I know some people are going to come for me, especially if you've uh, been watching me for about a decade, because I remember one time I said, like, like I said, like this was like a decade ago. And one time I was like, yeah, I think you only need sex toys if like your sex life is like super boring. Girly pop. I was just like delusional at the time. I'm not delusional anymore. A sex Girly toy pop, is amazing. Just stop. Been new Dildo with Becky. Huh? for years now but i'm just like speaking about it now what is the last thing you journal i can't can how how do you even reach it as a person who is morbidly obese it's it's kind of difficult even at my size but she is like 100 200 pounds bigger than i am how how do you even reach that area how are you even able to? Somebody else would have to get up under there to even reach that your area. About so I journaled about a conversation that I will be having this Friday. It's actually a serious conversation that I'm having with someone. So I journaled a little bit about that and like just how I feel about it and maybe some like talking points that I would like to bring up. Will you show your partner in videos in the future? So this goes for anyone, uh, whether it's a family member, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friend. I will show you. You can be in my videos. You can be in all my videos. You can do whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want, but you guys know what I mean. Be all up in my videos. Like, I don't care, but it's only if you want to. I will never, ever put someone in my videos that does not want to be in my video. I would love it. Would love it if my partner wanted to. Right? I mean, I'm glad she learned from her mistake in that regard. That, you know, consent. Whatever. But, like, um... So... So Amber Lynn's per so this is Amber Lynn basically saying that there is somebody else now that she's in a relationship with somebody else to be part of my YouTube channel but I understand if they wouldn't people are brutal and there's a difference between oh I'm gonna make fun of this I might make fun of your hair versus like I'm gonna dox you and your family and your dog and your dog's kibbles like it's just like people be doxing like what doctors I have <laughs> that actually goes into the next question perfect segue Amber Lynn what really happened during the weight loss surgery era okay I specifically said repeatedly during that whole era, I will explain later. You guys will see why I'm upset later. I can't tell you now, but I'll tell you later. Later is here and I'm just gonna do it short and quick and to the point. I could easily do a whole story time, but I'm just not gonna even do that because I'm, I'm not gonna put my energy into this that hardcore because I just don't want to. I did back then. My energy was very much into this back then. I was very upset. So let's get into it. So if you guys remember, I came on my YouTube and I said, oh, I can't get weight loss surgery until I don't binge for a whole year. It came out of nowhere. It was confusing. It was weird. It made no sense. But I held on to that and I said, okay, let's do it. Then I had an appointment with my dietitian and she said, you're going to come meet the surgeon because we need to talk to you about something. And this was before I was even supposed to meet the surgeon. Sorry, I itched right here. So that's why I'm super red and I just now hey, just get on with it. sensitive. But anyways, I was going to meet the surgeon even before I was supposed to. So long story short, hundreds and hundreds of people were emailing my surgeon 
finding his Instagram and messaging him. They were contacting my surgeon's office through the phone, through messages, any way that people could contact my surgeon, they were finding it and they were doing it. So how did people find out who my surgeon was? A reaction channel. How did that reaction channel find out who my surgeon was? Because I read maybe two sentences of an email that was sent to me by my surgeon's office. This reactor wanted to know so badly who my surgeon was that they faked wanting to get weight loss surgery just so they could get that email back to them to confirm who my weight loss surgeon was. And once they confirmed who my weight loss surgeon was, what did they do? They doxed him. They said, this is Amber Lynn's surgeon. This is who he is, blah, 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 blah. Well, my surgeon was Dr. Smith. Um, the same surgeon who did Tammy Slayton surgery. I have met him. He is wonderful. He was understanding. So when I met him and we had that meeting, I explained to him everything. He explained to me the type of messages and things that he was receiving. It was people saying how I binged and I lie, I lie, I lie. So not only was I fighting for myself to get weight loss surgery, but I was fighting against hundreds of people because of a careless reaction channel. I was pissed. I was hurt. Because it's like, react to me all day. Go for it. I really don't care at this point. But stop getting in the fucking way of my life. Like, you got in the way of my life. So once the surgeon heard about all this and heard my side of the story, that is when things were changed. And he was like, you know what? A year is way too long. He explained to me that they've never been in this type of situation where like someone who was well known gets doxxed and now he's receiving all of these messages and calls and stuff. Like not only like was that not fair to me, but it wasn't fair to them as professionals. Like they had to deal with all of these messages. That's not fair to them. As I speak on this, I also want to thank Zachary Michael because he knew about all of this. I actually told him in private. Um, I didn't give him like the rundown. I didn't give him every tiny detail, but he knew who my surgeon was. I went back to try to find the DMs, but I don't know. A lot of DMs were deleted. I don't know if it was because of him or because I had him blocked at one point. It's a mess. I do be blocking. I'm not gonna lie. But just out of respect, I'm not gonna share our DMs because I feel like that's low life. Um, I know reaction channels love to share DMs. It's like their go-to. It's like, oh, Amberly messaged me. Let me show you. It's like, for real now, come on. But yeah, Zachary Michael knew and he didn't say a word. And in his reactions, he acted like he had no idea. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people might um, ask this. No, that's not the reason why I didn't end up getting weight loss surgery because I was still going through with it. Like Dr. Smith is so freaking amazing. Like he was so sweet, such a gentleman. He was rooting for me through and through. Like I wish more than anything, if I ever want weight loss surgery again, that he will be the surgeon because it's just like, he is incredible. I ultimately did not get weight loss surgery because I didn't feel ready. I, I didn't, I genuinely didn't. I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed because me and my ex, my now ex, we were just going through a lot at the time and it was super expensive, like $35,000. Like it was just like a lot of different things that were causing me to be like, this is not the right choice right now. So the next question kind of goes into what we were just talking about. You know what? I called it. I fucking called it. I knew at some point that Amber Lynn was going to come back and be like, blame us for the reason why she can get, couldn't get weight loss surgery. Now I know, well, here's the thing as a reaction channel, I had no idea that there was a reaction channel out there who had the information about the surgeon and stuff like that. Because if that was the, if this is the case, I would have covered it. Who is this person? Who is this channel that, uh, that, um, went out of their way just so they could, you know, find out who Amberlynn's surgeon is? Because if that's the case, that's, I mean, the person deserves to be called out because that's wrong. Okay, that's just downright wrong. I mean, and if this story is to be to, to be to believed, which I don't know if I necessarily believe it. Um, if I I would have to honestly, um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see what Zachary Michael says because if he knew about it. Obviously, now he has the right to talk about it, right? Now that Amberlynn has spoken upon it. But if this is to be true, then that person deserves to be called out. That is atrocious. That is that is just going too far. You know, Amberlynn wants to get weight loss surgery, and she's, and then that jeopardizes Amberlynn trying to get weight loss surgery. Well, really, it didn't jeopardize because you could still could have gotten the surgery, right? So none of what this reaction channel did really jeopardize you getting surgery, right? You're saying, uh, despite everything, I just wasn't ready. I didn't have a good support system. All right. You know what I think? I think you were denied weight loss surgery. If, if their story is to be true, 
I don't think you had the cho- had a choice. You, the thing is, you tried to strong arm the doctor into giving you the surgery earlier. Okay, you try to sit there and say, because there's for a lot of weight loss surgery programs, like either six months to a year. See, I was in the six month program when I when I did the weight loss surgery. My sur- now the surgeon I went to wasn't very good, as it turns out. Okay. Um. But there's a, usually a six to a year program. Amberlyn wanted to be in the six month program, but she was recommended based on the evaluation. She was recommended to do the year program, but she didn't want to do that. She wanted to have the surgery within a couple of months. I mean, it was just ridiculous. The time frame that she wanted, she just wanted to bing, bang, boom, you know? She didn't want to work for it, and that's the reality. That's the, that's the real situation. So you can sit here and, and blame the reaction channels for making it more complicated, but at the end of the day, you wanted it a certain way and you didn't get what you wanted that's what i believe that's what it well it all points to that because based on your behavior you know based on the fact that you weren't doing really anything to really lose weight you know what i mean like she wasn't she was barely putting any effort into it yeah you you, you took all the tests necessary and and you know you so you, and stuff like that you you went off the list and everything but girl you were still like you were felt entitled to having the surgery earlier than everyone else this surgery is is a big deal amber it is life changing and there's a lot that goes into the preparation of having the surgery and that's why it takes about roughly 6 months to a year to even be rep- prepared for that surgery you have to prepare your body for that kind of surgery it is a rough undertaking because you're literally cutting off cutting out half your stomach it's uh, she just doesn't get it she thinks that she just wants a quick fix because she thinks she's entitled to that because she's amberlyn reed i I hate to break it to you boo boo but that's you're not entitled to a quick fix. None of you just the, the reality is is that even if the everything that you said happened happened you st- you you aren't going to get what you wanted. So blame us, okay? Blame us if you want to, if it makes you feel better, but honestly Amber, you're the one that's to blame because you don't want to put in the work. Is weight loss surgery something you will try again? So right now the answer is no, but will it always be no? I really don't know. But right now that's not like in the cards for me, honestly. So the last question is, what's your ideal sexual? Why? Girl, you are not, you're living on borrowed time. Oh my God. Total fantasy. Tie me up, uh, put my panties on my mouth. <laughs> oh boy. Come do whatever you want to me because I'm tied up. So there's nothing I can do about it. Anyways, you guys, this was a long Q&A. Like- God, coming from her, it's like you'd want to you'd want to eat your own panties, given what's in there. Because we all know this girl isn't wiping properly. Oh, it's so gross. Like, where is? Oh my God, it's literally been an hour for me. I have to edit this down like crazy. That was a fun hour. I thoroughly enjoyed this Q and A. I just wanted to give you guys something a little more with substance. I feel like this had substance, or at least I hope so. Uh, to me, it did. I love you guys. I have a lot of editing to do now, but I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. I cannot believe this bitch, after a year, comes back and blames us for the reason why she didn't get the weight loss surgery. You know what? I'm so done with girl world right now. It's like, (laughs) I can't. I literally can't with this bullshit. But anyways, that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Toodaloo, my loves.